Hello everyone, Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com. I want to do a special market update given the situation in the overall market and especially since I wasn't able to do a week of charts this week due to Hurricane Zeta. So, quick update. I want to show you some things that I look at to help time the market. Talk a little bit about market timing and where we are. Now, Market timing, as I often say, is less about beating the market and more about not letting the market beat you. So what do I mean by that? Well, occasionally the market will lose half of its value. And I say occasionally, you're probably thinking, Dave, that, that really doesn't happen that often. It happens more often than you would think. And somebody once said that every asset class will lose at least half its value at some point in your lifetime. Now, I'm old, but I'm not that old. And over my short lifespan, I've seen a couple of 50% haircuts in the overall market. If you don't believe me, take a look at the charts. The old hedge fund adage comes to mind. He who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. So occasionally you might get whipsawed or knocked out of the market. But as Greg Morris says, whipsaws are frustrating. Bear markets are devastating. You could survive frustration. Now, a while back, I came up with what I call the 10% TFM system, and I'll talk about that in just one minute. But basically, my thinking was when a market drops more than 10%, it could be in trouble. And the other reasoning in this system is that if a market's going to lose half of its value, it's going to lose 10% of its value first. So once a market loses about 20%, you need to think about exiting. And around the time I came up with all this, somebody pointed out that Gayard and Baleo did a paper where they talked about how bad things happen below the 200-day moving average. So along those lines, I was somewhat inspired to do this, where I want to show you how bad things can happen once a market goes more than 10% below its 50-week closing high. Now, the Great Depression obviously is illustrated underneath where it dropped about 90%. But if we just go right back to earlier this year, the market lost obviously 10% of its value. And then peak to trough ended up losing on a closing basis over 30% of its value. So it's very important to pay attention. Now, with market timing, just know where you are based on these indicators. Don't focus so much based on a switch. Like people say, Dave, when exactly will you get bearish? Or when exactly will you get bullish? Well, like Justice Potter Stewart, I'll know it when I see it. But there are some things that you need to pay attention to and some areas where you should become concerned. We'll get to those in just one second. Now, what I like to do a lot is let my ebb and flow control the portfolio. If I'm seeing short side setups, then I'll start putting on some shorts. If I'm seeing long side setups or still seeing long side setups, I'll put on some longs. But of course, you want to wait for entries on all those. Now, on your existing portfolio, you want to honor your stops on any leftover positions. We've got one today notwithstanding that's really doing pretty good in spite of all this. And it's because it's defying gravity as you could argue a COVID-related stocks or benefits from the horrible COVID situation. Now, you want to consider shorts if the market stays weak and also as the database provides short side setups. I could actually give you my scans if you're interested. If you're already a member of DaveLander.com, a gold member, just go into Members Resources and you can pick, and pick them up there. And I'm also working on some new scans for StockCharts.com. Anyway, so basically what I do is I listen to the database and sometimes the database will speak. Right now I'm not seeing a whole lot of shorts just yet, but on the first bounce I probably will. Way back in 2007, as I've been saying, or as I preach ad nauseum, I saw a lot of shorts setting up long before the market actually rolled over. Now getting back to market timing, one little simple technique I use is the what I call the buy line. And that's just the 50-week closing high times 90%. So if it drops below that, we know the market is more than 10% below its 50-week closing high. Now, obviously, way back in February this year, the market dropped below that level. As long as it's above that level, I would consider the market good, for lack of a better word, Tarzan speak, good. And as it begins to drop below it, then things turn south. 
Now, if we go back to February, it's kind of interesting that this is a weekly sell signal. This is a weekly chart, a weekly sell signal. We actually saw signals here because the market dropped so fast before we saw signals in some of the other systems and techniques that we follow. But as you can see, pretty serious drop here. Peak the trough, 30% or another 20% after the 10%, a little bit more than 20% after that. Now, for those keeping score, the sell signal, or you want to sell, I should say, when you're below the buy line, meaning 10% or more away from the 50-week closing high, and you close below the 50-week moving average. That's just a little bit of a whipsaw filter. Upside, a little bit more stringent. You have to have two bars of Landry Light, meaning you have to have two weeks where the lows are greater than the moving average and two weeks where the close is also above the buy line. The other thing you want to pay attention to on both a daily and a weekly chart is a net-net price change. Where's the price today? Go back in time and find the highest close over the past weeks or months. And if the net-net is negative, then that's obviously not a good thing. Now, this little histogram in the bottom simply measures that. Notice that when you drop below the buy line, it goes above 10% because you're more than 10% away from the 50-week closing high. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the well-watched 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average. And you can see now we are below. We have Landry Light, meaning, meaning the highs are less than the moving average on the 50-day simple moving average. And we have a little ways to go to the 200-day moving average. But if we did get there, that would also correspond with some support we have back here. So that could be a possible target for the market. And I hate to use the word hope, but let's hope that 3,200 holds. And that would be a, a good level to watch. Again, if that gets broken, we could end up down there at the 200-day moving average. That would be a plausible target. Now, one thing I like to use, especially on a daily chart, and it's worked really great so far this year, is Landry Light with a 30-day EMA. And again, Landry Light just means the lows are greater than the moving average. And you could illustrate that by drawing an arrow in between the price bars and the moving averages, a gap or light between the lows and the moving average. This indicator down here, all it does is count the number of bars that it is above the moving average. And one thing that I've found through some recent research is once you have about 10 bars or so of Landry light, you could have a nice trend developing. And you could see to the upside, after we bottomed out, we had some decent upside movement and it's okay if the market comes back down and kisses the moving average and that's where your count goes back to zero resets back to zero and again once you get about 10 days or more of upside landry light a trend could be developing in fact initial tests doesn't set the world on fire but it does show there is a slight edge to trading the upside when you have 10 or more bars of Landry Light and trading the downside when you have 10 or more bars of Landry Light to the downside. So we had a little spill recently and you can see the market did recover from that. The market had become questionable for a little while. Now we're back to questionable again now that we have the downside Landry Light. You can see we've got four bars down here of downside Landry Light. So obviously we need to pay attention to that situation. Now let's take a look at the bow ties. And the bottom chart just tells us the number of days that the moving averages have been in uptrend proper order. Both time moving averages, 10 simple, 20 exponential, and 30 exponential. And you can see we had a really good trend earlier this year. We had a little bit of caution when the moving averages began to meander and cross over a little bit. Went back to being good, but unfortunately they crossed over to the downside and we had a bow tie sell signal. So obviously when the moving averages are in downtrend proper order, which is illustrated by the red in the bottom of the chart, that's a bad thing. And you can see we did have a pretty good uptrend coming into this little slide. Things turned red for a little while in October. What was interesting is right around the time they began to turn red, the market began to rally a little bit. And then now with today's action, we'll likely turn red over the next day or so to the downside. So we had a little red back in October, earlier October I should say, nothing really materialized from that, and now it's beginning to look a little questionable as we go into November. If we zoom it in, you can see that technically they have crossed over, so the 10 is below the 20 and the 20 
is below the 30. If you were looking to trade a pattern like this, you would look for a one bar pullback. See my website at DaveLeonard.com for a lot more on trading the bow ties. So that's all I have. But just a quick market update. Obviously, things are getting a little questionable in here. It's going to be a fluid situation. So pay attention. Pay attention to the market in a minute. And I'll obviously touch upon these things. And I want to thank everybody for watching. May the trend be with you. And if you got something out of this video, please do me a favor. Like this video. Leave a comment down below. And I promise I will answer your comment. I read and answer all comments. And again, if you need some follow-up information, DaveLander.com. If you need to reach me, DaveLander.com slash contact. Thank you so much.